Welcome back to the Unification Principle presentations. I'm your host, Dr. Tyler Hendricks. In our last session, we talked about the process of growth through which we go, and that our growth depends on the decisions that we make. Now we come to the question of life after death. We may live a wonderful life for a hundred years, but is that all there is? In us, there's a bigger horizon, there's a desire for life beyond life. But how can we be sure about what that life will be like? We will discuss this in today's session. To live well and to die well is the greatest aim of our life. We assume that if we live well, we will die well. Eric Fromm, one of the most influential thinkers of the 20th century, pointed out the damage done by the material abundance brought about by industrialization. He emphasized giving up a life of acquiring and adopting a life of being in his book, To Have or To Be. The unification principle deals with this under the theme, the incorporeal and corporeal world centered on human beings. The fundamental premise is based on the existence of an afterlife in a realm we call the spirit world. God created human beings with dual natures, the external form, as the body, and the internal nature, which is our spirit. A person has actually three phases of life. We start with, with nine months inside the mother's womb, which is 10 by Korean counting. We might have up to 100 years on earth. And then the third stage, eternity in this spirit world. The unification principle calls this the incorporeal world. The nutrition and prenatal education received while inside the mother's womb prepares us for our 100 years of life in the physical world on earth. But in a similar manner, the physical life on earth prepares us for the eternal life in the spirit world. The life we live on earth is the basis for our life in the spirit world. If we live well on earth, we hope to die well as we transition to the next world. What nutrients do we need on earth? in order to be healthy. According to the World Health Organization, health is a state of well-being in the physical, mental, and social dimensions. So they know that health is more than just a physical state. The human being is composed of spirit and flesh. The physical aspect is defined as the faculty that embodies the physical desires for food, shelter, and procreation. The physical body maintains its health by receiving yang energy in the form of sunlight and air, and what we call yin energy in the form of water and food. These perform a give and receive action within the body centered on the blood circulation. The, human, the physical aspect of a human body consists of a physical body and a physical mind, your, your, your basic instincts. And these are all very good. We need a physical body to live and to function and multiply and do many things in this physical world. Likewise, our spiritual aspect consists of a spirit body and a spirit mind. The spirit mind emphasizes the original values of truth, goodness, beauty, and love. As the quality of nutrition determines the health of the physical body, so too the quality of nutrition determines whether the spirit grows to be healthy or just remains immature. What are these nutrients? Among the nutrients for the spirit, the yang nutrient we call the life element. This can, de this can be defined as the divine love and word of God, the divine blessing of the Holy Spirit, universal energy, the essence of universal truth, the source of the 
yin nutrition for the spirit is actually the physical body. That yin nutrition comes from the deeds that we do and the words that we speak. For example, when we overcome physical hardship and do good, we provide good yin elements to our spirit. As a result, we feel elated, we feel self-esteem, we feel a lot of energy. The elements that are supplied then by the physical body to the spirit body we call vitality elements. The spirit body does not only receive from the physical body, it also feeds the physical body. When we are happy spiritually, our physical body physically becomes energized and healthy. When we're excited, we sing and dance. On the other hand, when we're stressed out, our body gets tired and in the long term becomes ill, diseased. This proves that the state of the spirit body affects the physical body. In order to grow beautifully and reach maturity, the spirit body should be supplied with pure vitality elements from the physical body. How can the spirit body receive this from the physical body? The conduct of the physical body should be good, good actions and good words. One should live a good life, not an evil life. Your words should be truthful, kind and polite. Give words of appreciation, encouragement and love and avoid complaint and anger or vulgar words. Don't talk about that. Don't talk like that. Your actions and conduct should be moral and ethical. Immoral, unethical conduct is fatal to the spirit body. An altruistic life living for the sake of others should be adopted, not a self-centered life. Life for the sake of others, a life of true love, definitely is the source of good vitality elements for a healthy spirit body and fantastic spiritual growth. Also, in order to nurture the spirit body to reach maturity, it is important to provide plenty of life elements. Life elements. This includes true love derived from the heart of God and the universal prime force. The life element is the spirit and truth of God. The life element is the grace and blessing of God. Life elements are the teachings and words of truth. In order to receive life elements, one needs to live a life that promotes the growth of the spirit body. Then you put yourself in the position to receive and to digest God's love and truth. One needs to adopt a lifestyle of faith, prayer, worship, and study the truth. Why do people pray, sing holy songs, attend church services, practice asceticism, and study words of truth? They do so in order to receive life elements, which are necessary nutrition required for the maturation of the spirit body. They live a life based on teachings of truth to ensure that they receive pure life elements, the nutrition necessary for the spirit body. When we live without faith, when we give in to physical desires, exposing ourselves to pornography or other kinds of satanic temptations, the flow of life elements becomes clogged. Instead, evil elements permeate the spirit body. Such evil elements are fatal to the spirit body. The relationship between the physical body and spirit body is akin to the relationship between a tree and its fruit. When an apple tree receives plenty of fertilizer, water, and an optimum amount of sunlight and warmth, what kind of fruit does it produce? It, the tree produces large, shiny, sweet apples of a high quality. These apples will bring a high price. In contrast, if the tree didn't receive fertilizer or favorable weather, what kind of apples will it produce? The apples will drop before they even ripen. This illustrates the relationship between the physical body and the spirit body. 
the spirit body, which lives for eternity in the spirit world, requires a physical body in order to grow. It follows the same principles as the fruit that can grow and ripen while only while attached to the tree. It is not possible to grow or mature after passing over to the spirit world, after you separate from the tree. As such, the life we live through our body in the physical world is so precious. It is imperative that we repent and ask for forgiveness for whatever sins or deeds or mistakes we made and repay our loans and fulfill our duties and responsibilities. Favors received and animosity issues should be dealt with clearly while we're on the earth. Therefore, Jesus handed the keys to the kingdom of heaven to St. Peter and said that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. God doesn't decide whether a spirit body ends up in heaven or in hell. The spirit body, the person itself, decides its destination. The spirit world is a world of light. If a spirit body has lied and hurt people, it will feel ashamed and will want to run away from the light. The world of darkness is hell. On the other hand, if a spirit body lives a good life and received good vitality elements and life elements from above, it will move forward to the center of the world of light. The center of the world of light is heaven. We need to ponder every day on how valuable our life on earth is and be grateful for it. What we have talked about is God's ideal. And yes, it's very idealistic. But human beings live in a reality of, with a lot of grief and loneliness. Every day, countless events which ought not to occur are occurring around us. We easily witness others suffering due to such circumstances, and we ourselves suffer. I desire, I wish, that you will live a life where you receive plenty of good vitality elements and life elements and lead a genuine life in this world and the next. But it's not so easy. We have an evil mind that undermines our good intentions. If we could discover the source of this evil mind, which no one wants to have, then we would have hope to get rid of it. Our next session will provide surprising answers. Thank you so much for listening and God bless you.